I am Pastor Greg Tipton, and this is New Life Today, and we are so glad that you are joining us. Listen, we started a segment entitled, Refuse at Your Own Risk, and what we're talking about is being careful not to refuse when God speaks, and we're going to continue that right now. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, uh, speaks to us, and it tells us this. It says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. Now that's talking of the Lord. And it's against the backdrop of Moses speaking to the people of Israel. He said, for if they did not escape, who refused him who spoke on earth, then much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. So refuse at your own risk. And we got to be careful not to refuse to hear the voice of the Lord. And in order for us to really understand the importance of that, my, my mind goes back to, uh, to Israel, goes back to Israel's conditions and situations that, that drove them into captivity. And of course, the scripture tells us that my people uh, are are taken captive due to a lack of knowledge. They're destroyed due to a lack of knowledge. And, um, you know, when we refuse to hear the Lord speak in our life, uh, in the various ways, in the many ways in which he has chosen to speak to us, uh, then uh, what ends up happening is we set ourselves up for uh, a place of destruction. We set ourselves up for uh, the possibility of being bound, and, uh, and when I say bound by things, you know, the enemy loves to fight against people. He loves to fight and oppress people and just keep them bound to things, uh, you know, addictions, different things of that nature that come upon people. Uh, those are, those are, believe it or not, they are spirit driven. Uh, the, many of those addictions are spirit driven. And, and um, you know, when we understand that, uh, then we begin to understand what the Word of God says about being able to be free and to be delivered uh, from those things. Um, not everything that we deal with is a sickness. Sometimes it is really the enemy just trying to keep us in a bound state. And we need to have a uh, we need to have a real experience with uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior and with His precious Holy Spirit who gives us power, uh, the ability uh, to, to live and to, uh, the ability and the power to overcome and the ability and the power to persevere and to break free and to break those um, addictions and different things that are on us. But uh, we'll only know that if we know what the Word of God says and we know what the Word is saying. And, and if, we, if we refuse to hear it for whatever reason, sometimes we'll refuse to hear it because we just want to have our own way, right? So we, we just, we, you know, we want to live how we want to live. Que sera, sera, whatever's going to be, will be. And we just want to live how we want to um, in, in any manner that we want to. And, and we can do that. Uh, understand, we can do that. But the, but the writer of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, who's Jesus even, had, uh, you know, said he was the wisest man that ever lived, um, that is until Jesus came on the scene, but um, the wisest man that ever lived wrote, and he said, do all that is in thine heart, young man, but for this, know that you will give an account. And so, you know, even the wisest man that ever lived understood, I can do whatever I want to do, but there will be a payday that'll, that will happen. But I think one of the most amazing things is that God is faithful to speak, to us if we'll just hear him. He's faithful to, you know, if you think about our heavenly father, you think about God, 
um, his sovereignty. You think about his power. You think about, I mean, he's a, he's a creator. We're doing a series right now in, uh, in, on Sunday mornings in Genesis, and we're working through Genesis, the first 11 chapters. And somebody said, well, why not the entire book of Genesis? Well, we'll get there one day. But, but I really felt uh, impressed by the Holy Spirit to cover those 11 chapters because those 11 chapters deal with a host of things to help us understand the entire gospel message, the entire Bible, uh, both Testaments, old and new, everything. And of course, that first chapter deals with God as the creator, the originator, the cause of every effect, everything. And when we understand that, and we understand how God established everything and how he fine-tuned and calibrated everything to operate the way that it is, then we understand there is someone to whom we give an account. And um, the good thing is, is that we can do that right now. We don't have to wait. We can do it right now because we'll either do it now or we'll do it on the other side uh, of this life. And if we have not given that account now at the foot of the cross, and I promise you, we don't want to give the account there because there is no way to pay the debt that is owed. And the eternity that we spend without God uh, just is not worth every bit of it. But God speaks, and God is faithful to speak. And when he speaks, when he's dealing with people, when he's talking to them, uh, God is faithful to speak to them early. Now, somebody said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, let me give you some scriptures here that underscores that very point that God will speak early. When his children begin to slip into um, sin and into iniquity, God, God doesn't wait for the crash and try to pick them up. God will, will speak early. And here's what the writer of Second Chronicles uh, says to us in chapter 36, verses 15 and 16, And the Lord God of their fathers, sent warnings to them by his messengers. Now, that was the prophets that he sent, rising up early and sending them. Rising up early, how? B before, they, before the penalty of sin was exacted, um, begin to speak to them before they slipped into gross iniquity and into gross sin. Uh, God, God went early and tried to deal with them, rising up early and sending them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Listen, the scripture says that God chastens those that he loves, which means he chastens all of us because he loves all of us. But now whether we will receive it, whether we will hear it, that is up to us. But he says on, on his people, his dwelling place, he had compassion, so he rose up early. But here is the response to that. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against the people till there was no remedy. Uh, the gospel elicits one or of two responses. It will either elicit a response of joy and amazement and awe, as we read in the book of uh, Acts, or it will, uh, it will elicit a response of mocking, mocking the messenger, mocking the message, and, and essentially mocking God. And uh, that's, the, that's the two responses that are elicited by the gospel. There's no medium ground. If, if you're in a place that uh, the uh, gospel, and I, I do my fingers in quotes for a reason, uh, if the gospel is supposed to be preached, but it is not challenging you, and it is not... Um, it is not uh, um, challenging uh, you to a response, then uh, the gospel more than likely is not being preached. And so here they mocked them. They despised his word. They mocked the messengers of God. And of course, the scripture says that um, the scripture says that there eventually came wrath from the Lord and there was no remedy. Why? Because the remedy had been passed over, had been, had been gotten rid of. They, they refused the remedy to their ailment. They refused the remedy to their sickness. Jeremiah, who was a prophet to, uh, to Israel before it fell, um, 
he says, uh, he reminds them of this many times. He says, and now because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I spoke to you rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear. I called you, but you did not answer. He said, since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even sent to you all my servants of prophets daily rising up early and sending them. He goes on numerous times throughout his uh, writing here in the book of Jeremiah. He will remind them that, hey, God sent you messenger after messenger. In the 25th chapter, he said, rising up early and speaking, he said, you would not listen. He said, and the Lord has sent you all his servants, the prophets, rising up early, sending them, but you have not listened, nor have you inclined your ear. In in chapter 26, he says, you would not heed the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent to you, both rising up early and sending them, but you would not heed them. And he goes on. He says, you've not heeded my words, says the Lord, which I sent to them by my servants of prophets, rising up early and sending them. Neither would you heed, says the Lord. That's in the 29th chapter. You keep going on in the 35th chapter. He says it again. I've sent to you all my servants of prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, turn now everyone from his evil way, attend your doings, and do not go after other gods to serve them. Then you will dwell in the land which I have given you and your fathers, but you have not inclined your ears to obey me. And I could keep giving you scripture after scripture after scripture of this statement being made that I've sent my prophets and I spoke. God is always, always faithful. And the scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews, the first chapter, that God has spoken to us in diverse ways. And he has spoken to us in in many manners. And he says he spoke to us through the prophets, and now he speaks to us through his son, Christ Jesus. Here's what it says. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these days, these last days, spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. And so he's given us his word and he's spoken to us and he's declared. I want to give you one more verse of scripture just before we end this segment. And and I think this really captures it. This is Zechariah that captures this. And in the seventh chapter, this uh, he's segueing into uh, another um, uh, into another uh, issue uh, with the children of Israel, not really an issue, but kind of a, a different route that he's going with his ministry. In the first six chapters, he deals with eight different visions, apocalyptic visions in the first six chapters. And then in the last few chapters from chapter eight to the end, He's going to deal with the millennium. He's going to deal with the second coming. He's going to deal with uh, the last days, the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. He's going to deal with uh, Armageddon, all of those things. But in the break, in the seventh chapter, he, he uses the prophet Zechariah to remind the people why they were in the position that they were in. And oftentimes that's, that's really the issue. We, we fail to grasp why we are where we are. Well, is it because I disobeyed the word of the Lord? Always, any time, any time that I've ever in my life, uh, that I've ever um, disobeyed uh, the, the word of the Lord, it has always resulted in uh, failure, <laughs> to say, to, for a lack of better term, has always resulted in failure. Uh, the best policy is obedience to the Lord. But here's what Zechariah says. Zechariah says, you should not have, uh, or he said, you, uh, should you not have obeyed the words which the Lord proclaimed through the former prophets? When Jerusalem and the cities around it were habited and prosperous and the south and the lowlands were inhabited. I want you to think about that for a moment. This is God rising up early right here. God didn't wait for famine. God didn't wait for drought. God didn't wait for destruction, pestilence, war, all of these. He tried to get their attention while they were still prosperous. And this was part of the problem because as the preachers came, Uh, and they were preaching the gospel in a time of prosperity and blessing. People mocked them. 
because they said, well, surely your message has to be wrong because uh, look at all of this prosperity that we've got. Look at how well we're doing. And we kind of have had that in the American church. We've preached and we've tried to warn those of us that have seen how things are going, have tried to warn the church and tell people that, hey, you know, there's, there's coming a time that we're going to reap the recompense of our reward for forgetting God, for not uh, being, his, uh, being his voice in the earth, for allowing the love of other things to come in. Uh, you know, all of these things that separate us from God and, and pull us apart from God and get our attention, which is a form of idolatry. Anything that our attention uh, is, is locked on, that's what we worship. Now, we don't get on our knees and bow down and burn incense to it and pray, but that's what we worship because that's what we desire. It's what we long for. It's what we look for. It's what our mind runs on. Whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. But if it has more attention, if you're a believer and that has more attention than God does in your life, then that has become what you worship and it has separated you from God. And that's a form of idolatry, which is a form of spiritual adultery, cheating on God, cheating on the one that you've been betrothed to. And so often we, we've said, well, we can't do that. Look at the churches are doing good. The finances are good. All of this is good. God, man of God was going to bring judgment to his house uh, where judgment has to begin first. Man, God, God's, not, God's not doing that. Everything's well. Everything's going well. God always sends his word early. And then Zechariah gives the response in verse 11 and 12. He says, but you refused to heed. You shrugged your shoulders you stopped your ears so that you could not hear. And he says, and they made their hearts like flint. They hardened their hearts. They refused to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. And he says, thus great wrath, great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Listen, don't refuse at your own risk. If you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now and you, you hear that knock at the door of your heart, don't refuse that knock. Open that door. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, the third chapter, that Jesus stands outside the door and he knocks. And there's only one handle to open that door and it's from the inside. Jesus will never, ever, ever, push himself and force himself into your life. He will only come in as he's invited. But if we invite him, he said, I and the father will come in and we will sup with you and we'll take up our abode in you. And the Holy spirit will take up his abode in you. And the, and the, the joy of the Lord will become your strength. If you feel that knock, you hear that knock answer that knock of the Holy Spirit. Is that tugging at your heart? Is that just that tugging that says, hey, I have better things for you. Listen, we're going to finish up in another segment of how he speaks to us. And I believe that you'll be blessed. Do us a favor, click that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and uh, share these videos with people. Uh, you can also go back, like I said, in the description box, there should be links to previous videos where you can go back and look at a, a host of videos that we've done uh, through the years. And uh, we're looking forward to being with you on another segment of New Life Today. And remember, if you don't have it, you can have new life today in Jesus Christ.